Hey guys, Andrea, welcome back to the channel. So guys, this is a very back to basic one and I have done videos about this this time last year and guys, if this one gets enough views, so if we can get up to like 30, 40 views, I will do a reaction video to that one as well. But let's jump into it. It's organisation with a disability. So as we come up to the various holiday seasons that are being celebrated by our local community. I know Diwali is coming up. I know Christmas, Hanukkah, general community celebrations. Um, things are starting to wrap up for the holidays and into the new year as well. So that is where we start to think about in the new year how we want to live life. Um, for some people, it might be new NDIS programs, new care programs, new plans. And so how do you keep the ball rolling? And guys, this is not an exhaustive list because things that will work for one person may not work for another. Someone without a disability might be able to suggest these tips, but they may not work for someone with a disability or neurodiversity or mental illness. So the first really basic one is... Know whether you qualify for any care schemes in your part of the world, your country as well. So I know Reddit's got some great information on the Reddit disability thread. I know the NDIS access line. Um, guys, the other thing with that is they can be challenging to apply for. It might cost a bit of money as well. And so that one is a really big one to know if you qualify because qualifying for a care program not only for your friends and family for yourself it's a game changer and guys it will be a huge adjustment period you might find that there's a bit of care resistance there care resistance being the official term if you are so used to because of your dynamics pre getting approved for that you are expected to do everything for yourself and can't understand why you're tired and exhausted all the time. And then you have some help coming in. Um, you might feel because someone's doing the washing up for you while you're sitting watching TV, but you're also talking to them, that you are feeling guilty. Guys, if you have a support worker, a caregiver, or even a housekeeper coming into your home, you need to remember your home is their workplace. They are getting paid to help you. Um, guys, that for high-functioning people can be a trippy dynamic. Then that leads me to the second one. Know the difference between a support worker and a caregiver. So, guys, there is a slight difference, and care can be given by a support worker depending on their level of training. So, guys, I will do a whole other video on what is the difference between a support worker and a caregiver. But generally, a caregiver does help with a lot more tasks of grooming as well. So, guys, I've just Googled this one. And a care, so this is from Pulse Care Services, which I think is a American-based caregiver. But they're saying a caregiver delivers care to service users in their own home who often require palliative care. A support worker provides support to individuals with learning disabilities who live in supported living accommodations. Carers can be paid or unpaid, which is very true. And they're often family members or partners, while support workers are formal paid supports. So I have talked about informal and formal supports as well. Support workers may take, may undertake training with a disability organisation or have on-the-job training. I know a combination of both is now considered best practice. Caregivers can work alone or with another care assistant, while support workers usually work in a team, which is very, very true. Uh, now, in Australia, support workers can give care um the very unique difference in australia is that you can have support workers from an agency that work in the team 
but there is a risk if even the best person-centered teams an organization explode you may not have a consistency of care team and support workers depending on what they call them and so you can then have an independent support worker this carries risks and benefits it does depend on your situation as well but that's where the choice and control comes into things as well um this is knowing what the support worker's boundaries is as well and what your boundaries are so you'll have to talk with family and friends about protecting yourself um it may be putting some other formal supports and policies in it well so it might be supported decision making it go it might be going under adult guardianship for money it might be having a meal delivery service as well i know good really good supported independent living organizations will double down on the nutrition i know some houses that because of their capacity have a lot of clientele will cook one meal or if you have dietary needs cook a different couple of meals and once a week once a month you'll sit down as a household and vote on what food you will like if it's like my situation where i'm in a granny flat and there's someone upstairs you might on a weekend i'm starting to batch cook meals and so that is something where the support workers can help you with activities of daily living so that's the other thing know how your disabilities illness or mental health affects your life so if you need help with personal care so that's things like showering toileting walking even getting out of bed they are things that a support worker can help with they probably will need specialist training if you're in a wheelchair for hoisting for showering and showering with dignity as well um that's also where choice and control comes in as well and it's a very small thing of asking does a person want to wash their hair do they want to use soap or a body wash how hot do they want the water um if it's an option for them would they prefer to have a bath that day do they want perfume on um what clothing are they wearing so that is where someone who might have limited choices you can give them some level of choice and control and then we once we've got that groundwork done and you're in appropriate housing because i do know that that is a fight for a lot of ntis clients in regional rural and remote areas is having enough care hours and having people being able to come into their homes so i've talked about a couple of different housing options let me know if you want me to do a deep dive with debbie lund guys as well so having the right level of housing and the right level of care can take a couple of plans and care assessments so guys be prepared for that one as well so guys now the next one is getting organized i find a pen and paper is one of the best ideas because it doesn't require electricity a support worker can help you write down with it as well and if the internet goes down like we saw on last wednesday in australia we had a major provider outage where people in smart and sda homes were literally trapped support workers couldn't get hold of people people didn't have houses didn't have manual overrides as well and so it's pointing out that we do need to have manual backups as well um battery powered backups as well so that's the next thing as well so knowing what assistive technology you need and not being afraid of it as well learning how to use it as well so i use for diary for appointments is a pen and paper so i have a diary i have a calendar 
I then put it in the Google Calendar that I share with both my housing care team and parents as well. So using Google Calendar, using technology um, as well. And then we get into more complex organisation once those groundwork is done. And guys, this is going to be a bit of controversial advice, but eating the frogs first. And so what that means is doing what you don't want to do first and then rewarding yourself with the good things. So that might be washing, ironing, vacuuming, general housework that keep the wheels of a house running. And guys, if you're in a cell house, you might have assigned chores that you need to do or depending on your level of function, a support worker might be doing them for you. But if you are higher functioning, know that you will be expected to contribute to the household as well. So that might be if a support worker puts a load of washing on, hanging it up. That might be doing your own ironing. That might be doing your own floors. If you have common rooms and you just have a bedroom, it might be as simple as just keeping your own bedroom tidy as well. And guys, the other one is... For your support team, respect is non-negotiable. That might be for someone who's lower functioning saying please or thank you using a communication board. Um, To someone who's higher functioning, who has a different care team going out, that might be letting them know when you're going out, when you're expected to be back. If that person's not going out, that common courtesy of do you need milk, bread, etc., That's also those little classy things. So if you have housemates that go off to the day centre and you have the bath, it might be, depending on the situation, considered classy to wave them off to the bath as well. So all of those little things that don't cost a lot of money but show that you have been brought up, not dragged up as well. So saying please and thank you. And guys, if a support worker walks in and you are care resistant, sitting down with your friends and family and working out what that support worker can do to take that load off their plate. It might be as simple as taking you to doctor's appointments. It might be as complex as helping you keep on track with a budget. So work out what the support worker can do. And guys, for the support workers who follow me, housework and helping with housework is actually going to be a huge part of your role. So guys, be prepared for that as well. So guys, if you're a support worker and someone is always in chaos mode, helping them to get organised or suggesting them getting organised would be a really great idea. So if someone has not had the help and care they need and their home is quite dirty, that might be organising for a professional clean. That might be getting them into a mental health professional. That might be working with a professional organiser. All services that I know are not funded by the NDIS but may also be offered by crisis and community services as well but you can then start to get someone to take pride in their environment as Dr Jordan Peterson says your environment is a reflection of your mind someone with ADHD or a other mental illness that affects their thinking they might be trying their damnedest to get organized But because they don't work in a neurotypical manner of A, B, C, D, you might have to step in and get help them on track. So having steps of, okay, we make the bed daily. Okay, then what's the next thing? Do we hang up clothes? Do we collect dirty clothes? Are you a person who does a load of washing daily? When do the bed sheets need to be changed? If they've only got one set of bed sheet, helping them to find another set of bed sheets. 
And guys, don't discount charity shops this time of year as well. And then we get into the other one, which is, and I feel because of the link to this video, I need to do a whole other video on this, is budgets of time and energy. So you as a support worker might be taking people a lot more to Christmas gatherings, Hanukkah, Diwali. I know in my own personal life there's a lot of birthdays this time of year as well. It might be helping them finish end of year paperwork. So that might be taxes, that might be blogs, that might be emails they need to respond to as well. So guys, these are all things that people need to get organized. And the biggest one I'm going to say is having a routine, but having flexibility and movement within that routine as well. And guys, the big one is budgeting. And not only budgeting money, but budgeting time. So knowing what that person's physical limits are. So if they have a brain injury, if they have ADHD, if they have sensory deficits or even have get overwhelmed in large groups of people, knowing what their social limits are and preparing them for that, it is often better to make an appearance and have someone say to them or oh, you say, hey, I see so-and-so is getting tired. I'm going to take them home or asking someone if it's a birthday, if it's a Christmas party, if they've got a cake that needs to be cut, asking them to move the cake cutting up as well or saying, hey, can you save me a piece of cake? I'd love to be there for the cake cutting, but I'm a bit tired. And also for friends and family with a disability, making sure that there's a place that a person can retreat to. It's really important. And also, I've seen a really good video of having things to do. So instead of people just milling around and talking, if someone has autism, you might be better connecting on them of someone's interest that can spark a conversation. If someone has ADT, ADHD, that person may be able to go up to a person but might need pulling away from that person because they might be coming off as rude as well. Um, then there's the other one, of tricky one, of present giving. And so this is where your budgets come in. And don't discount time, experiences and handmade gifts as well. So guys, we're... Our subscribers is really, really growing steadily. We're up to 69, hoping by Christmas to at least get up to 70 to 100, guys. So cheapest way you can support me is liking, sharing, commenting as well. And thank you to the new subscribers to the newsletter and the blog as well. So guys, if you can like, share, subscribe, comment, um, the new podcast is out, a lot better sound quality as well. So guys, I will see you guys in the next video.